Welcome to Bond with RK Chemistry YouTube channel. In this video, I will explain the identification tests of carbonyl compounds, that is aldehydes and ketones. Generally, carbonyl compounds can be distinguished by using 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine test, sodium bisulfite test, SIFTS test, Tollens test, Failings test, and Benedict's test. Let us take 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine test. The reagent is 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine. When you treat 2,4 DNP with the aldehyde or ketone, there is a condensation reaction between carbonyl compound and 2,4 DNP, and there is an elimination of water molecule. Here there is an elimination of water molecule and there is a formation of 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazol. The color of 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazol will be yellow, orange or orange red color. It depends on nature of carbonyl compound you are taking. By this test you can identify both aldehydes and ketones you can identify. The second test is a sodium bisulfite test. The reagent is sodium hydrogen sulfite or sodium bisulfite. When you treat aldehyde or ketone, aldehyde or ketone, when you treat with sodium bisulfite, there is a nucleophilic addition reaction takes place. There is a formation of a white crystalline substance. There is a, an adductor sodium bisulfite addict will be formed. But the sodium bisulfite test will not be used will not be used for the identification of uh, bulky ketones. Suppose if you take uh, benzophenone this one is uh, benzophenone if you take or acetophenone, if you take bulky ketones like benzophenone or acetophenone, these type of ketones uh, cannot be identified by using a sodium bisulfite test. In these ketones, it is very difficult to add sodium bisulfite re reagent to the carbonyl group. There is no nucleophilic addition reaction between sodium bisulfite and the bulky ketones such as benzophenone and estophenone. These are negative to the sodium bisulfite test. These are exceptions to the sodium bisulfite test. SIFS test. This one is used for the identification of only aldehydes. Ketones cannot be identified. Ketones are negative to the SIFS test. What is the reason? If you take the reagent, SIFS reagent, this one is very weak nucleophile. This is a reagent. This is a SIFS reagent. This one is very nucleophile, weak nucleophile. This one can attack on reactive aldehydes. This aldehyde is very reactive when compared with ketone. This weak nucleophile can attack on aldehyde not ketone. That's why SIFS test is used to identify, is used to distinguish between aldehyde and ketone. Then what is the reagent? SIFS reagent para-rosa aniline hydrochloride. This is a potion dye. The color of this dye is pink color. This pink color when you treat with sulfur dioxide or sulfurous acid then there is a formation of colorless uh, compound reagent that reagent is called as SIFS reagent. This one is colorless. The SIFS reagent is colorless. When you treat with the aldehyde, there is a participation of 3 moles of aldehyde. In this molecule, you can find 3 nucleophilic sites. This one is one second nucleophilic site and this one is third nucleophilic site. This cannot act as a nucleophilic site because 
this one is attached with the three bulky groups so here these three nucleophilic sites will attack on three aldehydes and there is a formation of nucleophilic addition there is a nucleophilic addition reaction and there is a formation of pink colored or magenta colored compound this is a pink or magenta colored compound so by using sips test you can easily distinguish which one is aldehyde which one is ketone tollens test it is also called as a silver mirror test this test is used for the identification of aldehydes not for ketones ketones cannot be identified by using tollens test but alpha hydroxy ketones can be identified suppose if you take this is a ketone let us take and uh, suppose oh at alpha position let us take oh at uh, alpha position this is a uh, alpha hydroxy ketone this is keto group this is alpha carbon at alpha position there is a hydroxy group okay these type of uh, compounds can exhibit tollens test and also hemiacetol hemiketol hemiacetol and hemiketol suppose if you take this one this one is a hemiacetol let us take this one is oh this one is or this one is hemiacetol and also hemiketol this is a hemiketol this one is hemiketol these type of um, functional groups can exhibit tollens test suppose if you take glucose the cyclic st structure of glucose you can find hemiacetol in case of fructose you can find hemiketol so glucose and fructose both can exhibit tollens test and also hydroxylamine nh2oh this one also can exhibit uh, tollens test and also formic acid formic acid these functional groups or these molecules can be identified by using tollens test what is the reagent this one is ammonical silver nitrate the active component in the tollens reagent is ag and h3 twice plus when you treat aldehyde with the ammonical silver nitrate reagent that is ag and h3 twice oh this one in this complex the oxidation state of silver is ag plus the ag plus will be converted into ag there is a reduction of uh, ag plus into ag so this complex is oxidizing agent so this oxidizing agent oxidizes uh, aldehydes into carboxylic acid on the walls of uh, test tube there is a deposition of silver there is a formation of a silver mirror on the walls of test tube this is about tollens test or silver mirror test failing test in failing test we use failing a copper sulfate blue color solution and failing b colorless solution rochelle salt the name of um, rochelle salt is potassium sodium tartrate and sodium hydroxide before starting experiment you have to mix failing a and failing b since the complex uh, copper to tartrate this one is highly unstable you have to you have to form copper to tartrate before starting the experiment when you treat failing reagent with aliphatic aldehydes or alpha hydroxy ketone hemiacetol hemiketol formic acid there is a appearance of a brick red precipitate due to formation of cuprous oxide okay let us take aldehyde aldehyde this one is treated with uh, copper tartrate complex cu tartrate twice 2 minus in this case 
the oxidation state of copper is Cu2+. The Cu2 plus is converted into Cu plus 1. So this one is reduction. The Cu2 plus is converted into Cu plus 1. It's a reduction. So the Cu2 plus is acting as oxidizing agent. This one is acting as reducing acid. So the Cu2 plus will oxidize aldehydes into carboxylic acids. But ketone will be will not be oxidized by Cu2 plus since it is a weak oxidizing agent. In this process, there is a formation of cupric oxide. The color of cupric oxide is a red precipitate. And Benedict's test. This is also similar to the failing test. What is the advantage of Benedict test? The active component in this test is copper citrate. How can you prepare copper citrate? Uh, when you mix sodium carbonate, sodium citrate, copper 2 sulfate, you will get copper citrate. This one is stable when compared with copper tartrate. Here there is no need of Benedict A, Benedict B. You can prepare copper citrate and you can use after some time or after some days you can use. When compared with tartrate, this one is stable. The Benedict test is replaced failing test. Nowadays, in place of failing test, we are using a Benedict test. It is also used for the identification of aliphatic aldehyde, alpha hydroxy ketone, hemiacetol, hemiketol, formic acid. Similar, the mechanism is similar. Here, when you treat with aldehyde, when you treat aldehyde with the Benedict's reagent, that is a copper citrate, Cu citrate twice 2 minus in basic condition, there is a formation of cuprous oxide. It's a brick red precipitate. So here the oxidation state Cu2 plus and this one is Cu plus 1. Cu2 plus is reduced to Cu plus 1. So it's an oxidizing agent. In Benedict test also, the Cu2 plus is acting as oxidizing agents. It oxidizes aldehydes uh, into carboxylic acids. Okay, this is about identification of uh, carbonyl compounds. In coming video, I will explain identification of carboxylic acids and uh, amines. Thank you. Thank you very much.